Hey everybody, this is Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. What you're looking at here is a small culture of Daphnia, a minuscule crustacean often used in the fish keeping hobby to feed um, finicky fish or really any fish. There, as I said, a small crustacean, and you can see them tootling around in there. I have this tiny culture in a small cylinder with green water and a piece of guppy grass. Um, I feed them spirulina and that's some of the residue down there. Now this culture is as uh, limited as it is, is one I've kept for over a year outside. And during the winter, a lot of them died back, but they do lay eggs in any way in one of my buckets outside. Excuse me, outside I found a few had lived, so I transferred them inside where the warmer temperature will start their breeding cycle. And if I can get a cluster of these, I'll either feed them directly to the tank um, or I'll transfer them back to the buckets to start a new robust culture. When they're going strong, you can get enough to feed a bunch of tanks every, every few days. Uh, and certainly every week, but they're pretty cool in and of themselves. There's a big one, and then you see all the different um, sizes. They drop eggs. I think they can also reproduce um, asexually as well as mating. I forget the details. But they eat green water, algae, spirulina, yeast, all those things are used. Now, I'm going to zip through our pretty house real quickly. There's the saltwater tank and go to two other of my favorite food sources. Here you see a brine culture ready to go. I'm using a upside down smart water container attached to one of these simple apparatus which can be found at almost any local pet store. It's just called a brine shrimp hatchery. It's less than $10 and you attach the bottle upside down to it with an air hose and a simple air pump. And you can do this, you add salt water. I use salt water from my salt water tank, but you can make it with table salt. And then you put the brine shrimp eggs in a half a teaspoon. Uh, and I use a little baking soda, which apparently helps the shells of the eggs split. This orange color means they're ready. I'm gonna wait uh, till this evening, and then I'm going to drain a couple ounces out of the pipe, pull it from here, and then siphon it right into a container like this or like this. And then you'll get pure brine shrimp that you can feed, baby brine shrimp that you can feed to your fish. Now the last um, form of food I use is frozen. That's primarily for the saltwater tank. And in there, I have a pellet of frozen mysis shrimp, some frozen cyclops, that's the darker color. And then I use phytoplankton and um, oyster egg uh, emulsion and mix it into this big brew. I'm gonna stir that up and I feed it to the saltwater fish. This I feed to fresh and saltwater. Brine, baby brine shrimp's great for anything you have, anything. Big fish will gulp it down, but fish with small mouths like tiny tetras and rasboras it's terrific for that. Um, this is a major D do-it-yourself type setup. Everybody can do this. By the way, if you didn't know, baby brine shrimp are also known as sea monkeys, uh, what they used to sell on the back of comic books to dumb kids like me. And they called them sea monkeys, but really it was just baby brine shrimp. And they'd send you some eggs in a little container, like, you know, the, and then you would hatch them, and God knows what you would do after that. So these are just three of the regimens I use to feed 
all these tanks. One, two, the jar tanks, the uh, desktops, the nano tanks. Everybody loves baby brine shrimp and Daphnia, and I hope this was helpful. Always keep your hands in the tank. Thank you.